How bad was your roommate? Story one. Was settling into my first real job and moved into a three-bedroom house with a couple others. Didn't know them that well, but thought they were okay and it was cheap, so, you know, whatever. I had a well-paying job for a 21-year-old, so I thought it would be cool to cover some expenses on my own. I paid for the internet slash cable, which was not a ton, but I thought it would be nice. Anyway, I have one roommate who doesn't work, sits around all day watching Netflix on my Xbox. Watched it so much that he overheated the thing and the Xbox died. Then he borrowed another Xbox from a friend of his, didn't tell me mine had died, then killed his friend's Xbox as well. On top of that, he was disgusting. His girlfriend was always over wearing a cutoff t-shirt, letting her underarm forest get some fresh air. They'd frick all the time and leave condoms all over our shared bathroom. Dude would never clean anything, and I refused to do it. The result was a bathroom turn black and me taking daily trips to my parents to shower. Also, and I don't have a problem with people that take advantages of these programs responsibly, but this guy was on food stamps and housing assistance. He wasn't even looking for work. My living experience with him made me give some credit to Republicans. Remembered, roommates were in bands, band practiced all the freaking time, Wednesday night at 11.30. You need to work tomorrow? Oh, well, we have a gig that was planned two months ago that we haven't rehearsed for. Frick that. Then sometimes they would be on the road for a show or whatever, and some other band would be practicing in the freaking living room because my roommate gave out more keys than he did STDs. The more I think about that guy, the more I can't believe I didn't stab his freaking eyes out. You should have called me. There are a lot of elements to this story that make me feel sorry for the OP, but the filthiness is the one that gets me. One of my first roommates never cleaned, but insisted he would. After a week of saying he would do the dishes, I finally came home to the kitchen slowly flooding while he was passed out in the living room with multiple open pizza boxes around him. Story 2. Would let dirty dishes pile up in the kitchen, but here's the punchline. When I finally had enough of them and decided to do them myself, I found multiple used condoms between the layers of dishes. Tourette syndrome. Easily the ugliest human being I had ever seen, but would regularly bring home girls that were easily out of my league. It was like watching the elephant man shack up with Mila Kunis. Totally depressing, and I still to this day have no idea how he did it. Crashed a party I was throwing for a bunch of foreign exchange students. Saw two hot French girls sitting on the floor kissing each other and promptly ran upstairs. Only to return shortly thereafter wearing nothing but sweatpants and a string of condoms as a loincloth. Pelvic thrusts were made, beer was thrown, everything ended in tears. Oh my god, I just realized all those women he was bringing home were hookers. This is ten years later. Jesus effing Christ. Turns out they were in your league. Story 3. The worst roommate I had was sophomore year of college. He was randomly assigned after I had been given a double with no roommate. At first he seemed fine, but it got worse and creepier throughout the year. The first problem was that he was afraid of showering in our sweet shower. He would wait until he went home on the weekends to shower. Couple this with the fact that he wasn't the smallest person and that he wore the same black sweatpants and black sweatshirt every day, and you can see why this would be a problem. The same thing with shoes and no socks, which he stored in the common living room beneath the couch. The second problem developed about halfway through the semester. He wore a black robe in the morning while he was getting ready for class. When he went to pee, he would drape the robe off of himself onto the floor and then pee. This resulted in pee splatter combined with whatever was already on the floor all over his robe. Again, coupled with the lack of washing the robe received, you can see why this would be an issue. As if the pee-soaked, sweat-covered stench of clothing was not enough, the third problem developed near the end of the semester. I had recently started seeing a sweet mate's friend, and she routinely stayed over with me when I could get her to overlook the smell. On no less than three separate occasions, I woke up to find him standing in the middle of the room, staring at us and breathing heavily. It took until the third incident before the RA, who was also my sweet mate, called for an intervention for the person's hygiene and overall creepiness of masturbating to my girlfriend and I sleeping. Needless to say, he was placed into another suite the next semester, and I once again had the room to myself. Shudder. I know sometimes people struggle with body odor, but wearing the same clothes and not showering all week is pretty clearly a lack of effort kind of thing. 
I know you can be more relaxed in your own living space, but come on, folks, respect the noses of your roommates. Also, don't be creepy. Story 4. My first roommate in college, not first roommate ever, was a poultry science major from West Virginia. I was a comp sci, business admin, dual major. The first night I brought my boyfriend around, we curled up on the couch to watch TV. The first word out of her mouth when we walked in were, what the frick is this N doing in our room? Wow, not too often a roommate lets you know they are a truly deplorable human being that fast, from zero to racist in three seconds flat. Story 5. I had a roommate who would leave enema packages on the bathroom sink that we shared, and the used enemas just sitting on the very top of the trash can. Not only that, but he decided he also never once needed to flush the toilet. I wish I was making this up. My roommate borrowed my car for eight months. It was supposed to be two months, but she never saved for her own car. If I took my car back, she said she'd lose her job and run out on the lease and possibly lose custody of her kid, leaving me with 1100 bucks a month. I still haven't gotten my car back because it was impounded when she was arrested for coke possession while driving my car to work, apparently her boyfriend's house. She spent the weekend in jail. I spent the weekend watching her kid wondering what the heck happened. Because my car is evidence, I'm not getting it back and may be charged for its towing slash disposal. She, of course, lost her job after that and is now sitting at home smoking pot and not doing a dang thing. We also have roaches because she doesn't do her dishes. I can't wait for this lease to be up. You can get out of your lease now. If you describe what happened to your landlord, they can't legally hold you on the lease with a person who is a danger to you. Story 7 when I was 19, I moved out of my parents' house with my 18-year-old girlfriend. Long story short, her sister gets kicked out of her house and moves in with us. The sister has a boyfriend who lives 45 minutes away, so when he was in town, he stayed with her, us. Eventually, he was there all the time. I break up with my girl and she moves out. Soon after, her sister breaks up with the other guy and the sister moves out. So, this dude just sorta ended up being my roommate. He didn't have a car or a job and told me that everyone was getting evicted out of the house he lived in that was 45 minutes away. He kinda hung out with my friends and I, so I figured he could stay till he figured something out. I got him a job where I worked. He came with me to work for the first time or so, but then after that he basically quit. He has literally no money, so he's eating my food while I'm at work. He can't pay to do his laundry, so he's stealing my dirty socks and underwear out of my bedroom after his got too nasty. After nearly a month, I told him he had to go. After he moved, I went into the bathroom he stayed in, and it smelled like a homeless person took a crap on the floor. He had smeared deodorant on the walls to try and mask the smell. There were dirty socks on the floor that were so yellow and crusty, and they could stand up by themselves. The sad part is that he had two different girls in there after his girl dumped him. There are so many gross parts to this story, but him borrowing your dirty socks and underwear might be the part that broke me. I just, I can't. I hate that so much. Story 8. Too long didn't read, one roommate was a hooker that brought clients home, another was a crazed Mormon that used her own crap for art, and the last was an unhygienic, lazy Vietnamese girl. It may be a little late for this to get noticed, but my freshman year before I transferred, it wasn't one roommate, it was all of them. I lived in an apartment style with three others, two bedrooms with two roommates each. I'll start off with the other bedroom. One of them was straight from Vietnam and the other was a hardcore Mormon. Let's start with the Mormon, although relatively sane but highly religiously judgmental, she was an art major. Her projects were always a little off the wall, from vermin and he used Kleenex. One fateful day, a very nice, warm, early spring day, I decided to study out on our mini balcony. Lo and behold, there is a plate piled with crap. No joke, it was her crap. She crap on a plate and left it on the balcony to dry off to use in one of her projects. The one from Vietnam did similar to what you describe, except she'd throw her crap stained slash blood drenched TP in the trash can. You can imagine the smell. However, the worst thing that she did was use one of my face washcloths to wipe. Yes, wiping after she used the bathroom. I go to grab my washcloth and I could see a weird residue as well as an awful fetid V smell. Yeah, 
She used my washcloth because the TP roll was out and she didn't want to squeeze it in while traveling the short distance of three feet to grab some more out of the cabinet. I saved the best for last, my very own roommate. First night after move-in, everyone is getting ready to go to some party. I found out she is a dominatrix. I thought, weird, okay, shouldn't be too bad. As time went on, however, crap did, in fact, get very weird. She would bring clients home and lock me out of the bedroom. Reason for this is that after her sessions, she would sleep with them for a bonus, making her a hooker. There were several times where she'd steal my pillows to use as leverage for her clients because her bed wasn't firm enough. She'd use kitchen tools as adult toys when the rest of us weren't at home, and I kid you not, no surface was left unfricked. She would often admit these things to us while drinking because, seriously guys, it's just fricking. You all have twats, so you should be used to it. The last straw came when she brought one of her Cleveland clients home. She recommended that I should go down the hall. Long story short, took a dump on his chest, wiped it off with one of my towels, and fricked him afterwards using one of my pillows. I transferred. Have never spoken to them again. This sounds like maybe the worst 90s sitcom premise I've ever heard. OP was an ordinary girl going to college, but her roommates were the absolute crappiest she could have asked for, literally. Friday nights, it's OP and the Scatmates. Story 9. I had a roommate that was too lazy to get toilet paper out of the hall closet, so he just proceeded to wipe his butt on the shower curtain for a few weeks. Which one? The one who quit his main source of income with no plan on replacing his job and to this day still owes me 3 k in back rent? The one who acted like a jealous spouse anytime I hung out with my girlfriend or any other friends? I literally came home one night to him, cross-armed on the couch, angrily watching TV, and when I walked up, he said, And where have you been all night? No joke. The one who became a Jehovah's Witness and went constantly trying to preach to me. It was that or he'd get crap-faced and try to fight me. The one who insisted on having his ferrets there at the house. However, he was rarely home and the cage would go weeks without being cleaned. And as anyone who has been in a house with ferrets will tell you, the smell is only slightly more pleasing than a burnt corpse. I was woken up at 5.30 a.m. one morning to find my flat being raided by the police and my roommate being arrested. Turns out he was a pedophile. Ding, ding, ding! Tell him what he's won, Johnny! Well, we knew it was going to be one of these stories. Only took 11 of them. Story 12. In my senior year, I made the mistake of agreeing to room with two farmer D-heads. They partied literally every night. My third roommate, good friend of mine, bailed after a couple weeks of living with them to be an RA because he couldn't take waking up in the morning to an absolutely trashed apartment. They liked to make bacon every single morning. Every day that I went to class, I absolutely reeked of it. That might sound cool, but it gets old fast, trust me. My best story? They like to do the power hour. You know, 60 shots of beer in 60 minutes. They tried it once with whiskey. At 10 in the morning. I came home from class and the oven glass was shattered and they were passed out on the living room floor. Apparently they got through 34 minutes, got into a fight, and one of them put the other one's head through the oven. Good times. I live with four other guys. All of them are allergic to housework of any kind. Pots and pans sit for weeks on end in the kitchen, despite the fact that we have a dishwasher. When I do a load of dishes, they are immediately used up by my lazy butt roommates, who of course fail to reload the washer. Garbage bags do not go in the garbage. They sit in the common area, attracting masses of black flies on the floor until I freak out enough to get them moved to the garage. They sit in there until I take out the garbage. One roommate has a mom who comes by once every few months and attempts to put a dent in the mess that is our house. This poor woman scrapes the crust off our kitchen counters, unclogs the sinks, only for it all to return to the unhygienic entropy that classifies our house in the space of three days. The downstairs toilet has been plugged for six months. The guilty party is too lazy to do anything about it, and no one else gives a crap. Too long didn't read, I used to think myself a tolerant person until I found the exact quantity of spoiled food, splitting garbage bags, and mold at turn to took me into a simmering bowl of rage with a quadruple homicide in my near future. Story 14. I lived with my roommate for a year. 
First of all, he lost his toothbrush about four months ago and since then had been using bottles of Listerine alone to wash out his mouth, which still was freaking disgusting. He also biked everywhere and would come home smelling like a construction worker and then he would lay on my couch or even my freaking bed until he finally, if he did that night, showered. His clothes never got washed until he was completely out of them and would sit piled up in the corner of his room and some by his desk in the living room, including underwear. He washed his socks in the bathtub with our shampoo and hung them up to dry on the rail. He'd leave those mildew-ridden articles there until they were crusty and he also left the black, literally black, bathwater he had washed them in sitting in the tub until I emptied it so I could freaking shower. And that water smelled like foul B.O. Next, he never did dishes and left them sitting around the house. He lost a few of my dishes despite me telling him not to use them many times. He also cooked bacon constantly in a pan and never washed it out. It would sit there and the one time I did clean it for him, he yelled at me and said he hadn't been washing it so it could build up the aroma. He also cooked eggs and chicken in it which crusted all over the stove. He rarely, very freaking rarely, helped pay for things like toilet paper and paper towels. If we were out, even things like light bulbs or dish soap, he would say, I'm not buying it because my tolerance is higher and I can go longer in the conditions than you. He also never bought soap or shampoo and used mine. He never vacuumed, mopped, did dishes, or wanted to take out trash. That's a job for women, he had said. I am female. I want to punch the bastard. Wow, here I thought the guy was just a lazy, inconsiderate piece of trash, but I guess why not throw sexist on top of the smelly, rotten pile of garbage that is that roommate? Also, I feel like I'm getting anxiety just reading about how filthy some of these people are. Story 15. I once lived with a roommate who liked potato pancakes. She made a big batch of potato pancakes once and left them out for three months. We were in a stalemate over who would clean the kitchen first. Bastards turned purple and started growing tendrils toward the electrical outlets to take over the world. I caved. You missed out on free potatoes, man. When my wife was a freshman in college, she shared a suite with a girl who had some difficulties adjusting to life on her own. The day after moving in, the girl raised her bed up to the highest level, intended to allow more space for dressers slash storage, and made a fort of some sorts. She lived under her bed for two whole semesters, only leaving for class, food, bathroom, etc. She would also routinely wash her clothing in the dorm washing machines, but take the load of wet clothes back up to her room. To dry them, she hung them around the walls with clothespins and turned the heat up on high. Our college was in Florida, and as a result, the heat slash moisture turned the room into a swamp. I have no idea how people like that make it to adulthood. Come on, the fort thing sounds awesome! Except the never leaving your part is obviously weird, but I would want a bed fort to sleep in. My old roommate would Febreze himself instead of showering. He wouldn't clean his room so the floor was covered in tissues and he did laundry once in the six months he lived with me. He would be about not getting the parking pass and when I would give it to him he would go out of town for four or five days. And the icing on the cake was when he moved out, he called the power company to say he was leaving and got the power shut off on me. I had to pay 75 bucks to get it turned back on. I know some people like to say that they don't naturally smell like other people and that is why they don't wash their clothes. Hey people, you're just used to your smell. The rest of us are not. Story 18. My roommate broke into my dad's office and stole all his computers a few years before we started living together. I moved in and after a few months realized that the computers had some strange add-in cards that were really expensive and that my dad had. I checked the serial numbers and sure enough the computers were my dad's. Called the cops and had my B roommate arrested. The worst part was he knew us before, was my friend, had been to our house for dinner, and my dad had even offered to pay for some medical issues he had. Sucker. I thought I wanted fewer stories about filthy people, but this one just made me mad and kind of sad. Ugh. Story 19. At one point I had two roommates. One owned a bird and the other one hated the bird. At one point the first roommate noticed his bird's feathers didn't look healthy. We were suspicious but never knew for sure. Finally, we decided to install a motion camera and record his bird for a full day. 
After reviewing the recording, we noticed the roommate who hated the bird was spraying it with a kitchen cleaner and was trying to poison the bird to death. As soon as we saw it, we called him to come pick up his stuff and that he would find it on the front lawn. We changed the locks and never spoke to him again. The bird made a full recovery. Yay for the full recovery of the bird! Story 20. I had a roommate my freshman year of college who was one of the worst people I've ever met. He left our 9x12 room only to go to class and would order dominoes every night. Day and night, he would sit at his sweet custom computer with a window and blue LEDs and watch South Park while cackling like a hyena. He met a 14-year-old girl on some website or chat room and would talk to her on his Bluetooth headset for hours at a time trying to convince her to meet up with him and let him take her virginity, reassuring that it would only hurt at the beginning. Kid was freaking awful. He drank two times all semester, once during parent weekend when he ended up making a butt of himself in front of everyone that lived in the dorm and their families, and the other time was right before one of his final exams. The night before his drunken exam, he spent at least five hours attaching the fuses from a brick of firecrackers together so that he could set it off at 3 a.m. and pee off everyone that was trying to sleep. It did look cool, though. The worst part of all was that he was a chronic fapper. He would fap while he thought I was asleep when I went to the bathroom for a minute. Anytime, all the time. Constant fapping. However, this story ended well as he was asked to leave school at the beginning of the next semester as his GPA was a 0.49. Him moving out was one of the best days of my freshman year. So we're just going to pass over the whole pedophile thing. You didn't do anything about that, huh, OP? Okay, sounds like we had two bad people in this story. Story 21. My male roommate had a fascination for my underwear and shoes. I had my suspicions, but I found out for sure after coming home early one day, and I found him out on the balcony with most of my bras, panties, thongs, and my favorite pair of high heels. He was just rolling around in them, licking the crotch. Took a while for him to even notice I was there. He was so ashamed. Such a bad dog. I can't tell if you actually had a dog or just a really weird guy for a roommate. Story 22. I had a roommate who developed an addiction to H while I was living with him. Some of my crap went missing, so I put a lock on my door. One day I came home only to realize I didn't have the key with me, so I set about trying to pick the lock. He sees me trying to get into my room and offers to help me out by showing me how he can open the door by slipping his butterfly knife in between the trim and the door jam, popping open the lock. So here I am, having just watched my junky roommate break into my room with a knife that he's still holding. Uh, thanks. So I called up a buddy who does MMA and isn't afraid of anybody to stay the night. The whole night my roommate was pacing in his room, having realized his mistake, and flipping his butterfly knife around. The next day I went to get a U-Haul while MMA stayed behind to watch my crap, and I moved all of my valuable crap out. Computers, clothes, stereo CDs, etc. Then I told the landlord what happened. We still have three months to go on the lease, which she released me from as long as I promised not to call the cops. Fair trade, but I still had a bunch of my crap in there. I made an arrangement with my roommate for him to be gone while I got the rest of my stuff, which he thankfully honored. However, when I got there, he completely trashed the apartment. Not just my stuff, but his stuff too. He dumped the litter box into the tub and ran the faucet. The clay-based litter completely clogged the drain. I later heard from the landlord that they had to replace the whole trap, which involved taking the tub out. It was his cat, by the way. He also wrote on the walls in permanent marker, not just in our apartment, but also on all the stair landings. It was either Nine Inch Nails or Marilyn Manson lyrics or messages written in binary. 00000001 equals A. 00000010 equals B, etc. This was around the time the first Matrix came out, so I don't know if he thought he was Neo or what. The one thing I'll always frickin' hate this kid for, though, is that as I was rushing to get my important crap out, I forgot one hard drive. I had moved it as I was taking everything apart and just forgot. The hard drive had a bunch of original music on it. This freaking butthole took it out of the enclosure, took one of the speakers out of his subwoofer that he trashed, and put it on top of that hard drive. Frickin' degauzed it. It was my own fault for not backing it up before CDRs were everywhere and cheap and leaving it behind, but man. Anyway, too long didn't read, my junky roommate broke into my locked room in front of me, confirmed my suspicion that he had been stealing. 
I moved up the next day, and when I came back to get the rest of my crap, I found he had trashed the apartment. That is a pretty infuriating and sad story. Infuriating for you because of the lost stuff, especially that hard drive. And sad because holy crap, can that drug just turn people into the worst versions of themselves. Story 23. My roommate dumped cow blood into the bathtub and tricked his girlfriend in it. He told me it was fake blood and that it was for a photo shoot he was doing for class. Story 24. Not my roommate, but in my dorm freshman year, this one kid went through three to four other roomies because he would repeatedly get caught masturbating. Sometimes his roommates would walk in on him beating it multiple times a day, and he apparently never had the foresight to lock the door. He also played a lot of Warhammer, but I'm not sure if it's related. Oh, believe me, it's related. Story 25. My roommate used to take dumps with the door open so he could play Madden with the wireless controller. He was a multitasker. Story 26. My freshman year of college, I had a Russian roommate named Boris. He had moved here with his family two years prior. Now, he filled just about every stereotype that you have heard. He was an alcoholic that would more often than not be a vodka bottle next to our toilet. He would drink it with his cereal. It was incredible. He also was quite into drugs. You name it, he did it. He never cleaned anything. His coffee mugs would sit out so long with liquid in them that they would get dusty. Dusty coffee! And he spoke in broken English with that accent. He had only one class, which he never attended, and failed out after one semester. He smelled like an unwiped anus. He had a frick buddy, don't know who would find him attractive, who was polished, so I could never understand a word they would say, but she would leave her clothes everywhere. One time they were both showering together when I came home, and they had apparently both thrown up in the shower. I thought they had been taking a bath because the tub was full of water. Turns out it was just their puke clogging the drain. We had quite the discussion after that stunt. He would drink it with his cereal. Frat loops! Had a roommate who moved into my spare bedroom after she separated from her husband. She got caught banging a guy at work. Red flag, but I was desperate to fill the extra room. Fast forward four weeks, and she is soliciting on Craigslist. Our apartment was a revolving door of random hookups, full swaps, threesomes, etc. She would seldom host the hookup events, but the creepy dudes would still come over to hang out and meet up. There was a 24-hour period where she banged four people. Had a guy over for brunch, different one for an early dinner, and a threesome that same night. I ended up getting a dog, German Shepherd, just to feel like I had backup in the event of a rogue guest. Story 28. Back in 1996, I lived in Palm Beach County and had a roommate I'd met at work because I needed a roommate quickly after returning from school. He never paid his rent, never cleaned, basically never did jack crap. He did get a dog, although we weren't allowed to have one, and he ignored the property manager's demands to get rid of it. So the property manager served us an eviction notice. I think we had a month to get out, but due to my lack of funds, I headed straight into West Palm Beach and tried to get the manager of the Hotel Avernia to rent me a room and let me pay later. It was literally that or the street. Later that week, I got a call from my father stating that the sheriff's department had been looking for me. What the F? Apparently, they were trying to serve me a notice to appear for a civil case because someone had returned to the apartment and completely destroyed it the same day that I'd been finding a new place to live. Literally everything in the apartment had been destroyed. Classy crap like Frick My Pee Till It Bleeds had been spray-painted on walls. My awesome roommate sat in court denying everything despite witnesses who saw him and two to three other people at the apartment. After the eviction, but not me. None of them could say that they'd seen me or my vehicle. Ultimately, we were found equally responsible for over $4,000 in damages. F my life. My dad paid my half, and he died wrongly thinking that I'm a real piece of crap because of that incident. I got my room at the Hotel Avernia, where I learned all kinds of new and interesting lessons from the local sea heads. It comforts me to know I'll never see this guy again, because I harbor a lot of anger toward him, and I don't know what I'd do. The money and the time lost because of him are one thing. What it did to my relationship with my dad before he died is another matter entirely. This is why getting roommates you know nothing about is such a bad idea. I mean, this person was in a pinch and needed a roommate fast, I know, but holy crap. I can't imagine going through that. Story 29. One of my roommates used to have his girlfriend over constantly. I didn't mind because I really liked her, but she'd always stay overnight sleeping with him in his single bed. 
It was a bit odd for me at first sharing a room like that, but I got over it eventually. Anywho, they used to have danger fricking, which was basically any time I left the room. They'd have a quick ride and try to be finished before I got back. So maybe two or three times a week, I'd walk in to catch them in the act. There'd be no stopping them at that stage, so I'd go for a walk. One morning, I only went to the toilet and was gone no more than 60 seconds. When I came back in, he was flustered and she looked annoyed. Yep, he started and finished in less than 60 seconds. I never let him live it down. You are probably the nicest roommate I've heard about. I don't know if I could live in constant fear of seeing my roommate's junk. Story 30. A former roommate became the disciple of a homeless man who claimed to be an achy master and spiritual leader and hid him in his room for several months. He was stealing our food and was basically a waste of a human being. Next, I moved into a new room and the woman living there failed to inform me that the apartment was infested with bedbugs. She tried to stick me with the lease when she moved to Michigan a month later. Nope. Then there was the kleptomaniac self-harm pathological liar whose blood I had to clean up from our bathroom. And the one who claimed she was going to LA for a weekend only to call us from Pennsylvania saying she was locked up in a mental hospital against her will. Happened. The roommate would sneak out to the living room and open all the windows in the middle of a night in the middle of winter because it was stuffy. The roommate who became insistent that I should release my cat into the wild because he was feeling trapped. And on and on and on. I live alone now. I nearly forgot how one roommate woke me up when he got in a knife fight with his boyfriend. True story. Police and everything. Ah, uh, I remember my first gay knife fight. Good times. Knife fight sounds like it should be a gay euphemism for... I mean, come on. You can guess. I've been in a few knife fights. Please like and subscribe if you've made it this far. I hope you'll enjoy the rest of the video and have a wonderful day. Story 31. My roommate was mad I went to a party without him. As I left the party that evening, a car comes flying through the parking lot and I literally had to jump out of the way. It was my roommate. Later back at the apartment, I attempted to explain how abiotic and drunk he was. He said that I was the bad roommate because I always leave Otter Pop plastic on the coffee table. He then proceeded to throw a box of Otter Pops followed by everything else in the freezer at me, breaking many things in the process. I eventually moved out. Last I talked to him was years ago. He was in rehab. I asked for what? He said, you name it. Too long, didn't read? Pick up your Otter Pop plastic. Story 32. My housemate held a kitchen knife against my throat after we got into an argument about him smoking inside the house. Props for delivering such a fricked up story in a single succinct sentence. Brevity is the soul of bad roommate stories. Story 33. My first dorm experience, I was paired with someone who had the exact opposite sleep schedule of me. This wouldn't have been a problem if she hadn't demanded that I avoid the dorm room when she was sleeping during the day and then stayed up all night trying to do homework with the light on and sometimes music. She soon began using her nights to party, leaving me alone but only for a short while. Eventually she brought men back to the room but instead of asking me to leave since this was at night and I was sleeping, she would just frick them on the bunk bed above me. For some reason, my archaic college had bunk beds. She requested that I learn the faces of these men and keep their names straight because I couldn't slip up and have one man find out about the other. Once I messed up and called one by the wrong name and to punish me, she waited until I went to the shower then invited a bunch of guy friends over to sit in the room and wait for me when I returned in only a towel. I hightailed it out of there. It was like a bad adult film waiting to happen. Happy ending, though, she ended up moving out of the dorm and in with a friend of hers down the hall who also kept up the same irregular sleep schedule and man-mongering. Story 34. This is more of a horror story from the dorms, but roommates are roommates. There were three of us to a room, and each room was divided into two sections. It really was just a closet between the two. The two girls were 18, fresh out of high school, best friends, and cheerleaders. I think their most common phrase was, OMG! They were incredibly passive-aggressive. At that time, I was really struggling with my weight and depression. They knew this. Each room segment had a mirror, and their favorite activity was to come to my side, look in the mirror, pinch their skin, and whine, OMG, I am so fat. I swear, if I were any fatter, I would just kill myself. OMG, so grotesque. At this point, I was 22 or 23 and really didn't feel the need to yell at them. I had better plans. 
They would go home every weekend, and during that time I would take their jeans and remove the buttons. Then each week I would move the buttons slightly to the side so that the fit became smaller and smaller. Eventually they began to freak out and spend all their free time at the gym. I think I won. Too long didn't read, skinny bees got what was coming to them. You should be ashamed of how awesome you are. Gonna have to go ahead and agree with the commenter. You rock. Frankly, I was expecting something far less devious, but that was just beautiful and on theme. A plus. Story 35. My roommates never did the dishes, at least not as far as I could tell. I always hand washed my own dishes and put them away immediately after. One day I noticed that a bowl that had been sitting on the counter for some time was filled with water and had plenty of mold floating in it. This was just an indicator of their cleanliness. When one of their mothers came to move out some of her son's stuff, she flipped her crap and emailed all of the other parents to let them know how unsanitary our living conditions were. I moved in January of 2010, and by April of that year, all three of my roommates had either dropped out of school or left their jobs and moved back home. I had three months remaining on my lease and lived basically without any contact from them. Also, all of the utilities were in their names, and they hardly collected any from me. Maybe it's just the other filthy roommate stories, but a bowl with mold and water just feels so mild now. Story 36 my roommate was a really awesome Chinese guy who bought and cooked anything that was on sale. Dinners on his night off cooking were weird. My favorite is the time he bought a whole two kilogram of corn flour because he thought it was going to be delicious. It went something like this. Me. What are you going to do with it? Him. Uh, mixes it with water. Me. You have goo. I'm not sure that's really edible. Him. I will cook in the wok. Cooks the dough into a giant dome-shaped crust. Me. We cannot eat that for dinner. Really, man, I'll cook tonight. Him. No problem, no problem. I have idea. Chops the dome into strips with my scissors. Me. Well, at least it will fit into our mouths. Him. In my hometown, if you do not like the food, you must eat anyway. I will add chili. Adds chili. This goes on for a while with various improvements to the meal. In the end, it was chili-flavored strips of corn flour crust, cucumber chunks seasoned with vanilla protein powder, then fried in sesame oil in a bowl with milk and crushed cornflakes. It was okay, but he was a funny guy, so I didn't mind. Story 37. It really doesn't bother me to be the one that has to do all the extra stuff. I want a clean place. The roommate doesn't care, so it's kinda on me. So I'll take out all of the garbage, recycling, do all the common room cleaning, etc. I just figured if I didn't keep doing it, I'd wind up having to do it all anyway, but nastier. The one thing that really got me, though, was when I got home one day and he was all excited. Hey, Admiral Filgbo, I know how you like to keep the place clean, so I cleaned my room. See? See? He had cleaned his room all right and left six months of accumulated trash in the kitchen for me to take out. At least I got some of my dishes back. I mean, at least that roommate was trying? A for effort, F for f freaking filthy. <laughs> Story 38. At the worst point of my borderline homeless post-high school years, I was living in a two-bedroom apartment with four other guys. Three of us were sleeping on couches in the living room, the two bigger guys in one bedroom, and the other bedroom housed all our stuff. I knew all of the guys from a local business group, and this was only for about two months for the tail end of the lease. So my assumption was that the place was dirty only because we were all so cramped. We then all moved into the upstairs of a three-bedroom with a den house. One of the guys, Carl, was the son of the lady that owned the house. He ended up taking the den and renovating it into his own room. Fast forward a few months, all of a sudden he has an ant infestation and can't sleep in there anymore. In the interim, he decided to sleep in the main living room on one of the couches. Thought process here is, fine, he'll get it fixed and he'll go back in no time. False. This goes on for the next two years. It wouldn't have been so bad if he weren't incredibly lazy, slightly overweight, in his mid-thirties and sleeping in just his underwear. Imagine trying to bring anyone, let alone a potential lady friend over, and explaining this large, mostly nude, amorphous blob on the couch in the first room you walk into. To make things worse, he would never clean up after himself, and at random times would kick his blanket off and randomly be nude. We attempted several times to bring up the issue with the landlady, Carl's mom. But being that he was the baby of the family, she would blame us for what was going on and leave it at that. We tried looking into his room once on the rare occasion he wasn't home and it was like an episode of Hoarders. 
Useless junk piled five to six feet high with plates and bowls half filled with food just rotting and creating its own ecosystem. It was at that point that we decided we needed to move out. A couple of the guys were smart and got out sooner, so Carl eventually just took over one of their rooms and replaced his couch with an inflatable mattress. I was able to leave a few months later, and last I heard, Carl was still sleeping on his mattress and his mom was about to lose the house. No one else wanted to move in to pay rent. Surprise. I could go into more detail, but in essence of keeping it short, that's my horror story. Too Long Didn't Read lived with a replica of Carl from Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Oh yeah, like I'm gonna go back into that room with the friggin' ants. You see that place? Now help me drag my air mattress out to the pool. I want to work on my tan. I cannot do a Carl impersonation. Ugh. Story 39. My freshman year roommate was on a host of antipsychotic medications. One day he said he was running low on his meds and was having delusions of killing us. He then described the order in which he would kill me and my other two roommates and why. Luckily, I convinced him to kill me last. And that's how you had enough time to write this post. Bye. Story 40. I have always lurked here, but figure I might as well post on this one. I have a couple stories, nothing too epic, but sucky or awkward. 1. Our dorm rooms were just one big square with two desks slash beds in it, where the bed is raised above the desk. I came back from my morning class around 11am and promptly decided it was nap time. I woke up about an hour and a half later, rolled over, and my roommate was jacking off. I was stunned and just rolled back over, tried to tell myself I imagined it. I never brought it up and inquired about transferring rooms later that afternoon. I transferred into a room with a friend from high school, which was a good slash bad idea. Which leads me to my next number two. The next roommate definitely had some issues. I walked in on him once holding a razor to his wrist, which I then had to convince him it was a bad idea. I had to take care of him twice when he got sick from smoking pot slash drinking slash pot brownies, one time with another friend from high school, so double the fun for me. He also had a problem with farting a lot. He did it more than anyone I know. One night he woke both of us up because it was so loud. 3. I moved into an apartment with three friends I had known for a while. One pretty well, and the other two just acquaintances. The second day I was living there, I came back from work and there was no power. I asked the one guy who was in charge of paying the electric bill what was going on. He gave me a BS story that later conflicted with the story he told one of my other roommates. Long story short, he hadn't paid the bill for the last six months and had been spending the money the prior roommates had given him. He also never cleaned up food when he cooked to the point of our kitchen eventually turned into a swarm of flies. I moved out in less than two months. Thank goodness I wasn't on the lease. Those are my crappy stories. There are many crappy roommate stories. They may sound the same, but these are yours. Cherish them. Story 41. I let my friend stay at my apartment for free after she got kicked out of her boyfriend's house and had nowhere to go. I even bought her food, let her use my school supplies, shampoo, laundry detergent, etc. I didn't expect her to be there for more than a month, but she ended up staying for eight months. Once summer rolled around, she started complaining that it was too hot in the apartment. I was struggling with money, so I told her to start paying half of the utilities if she wanted the AC on all the time. She said that she always sees me leave lights on, so she refused to pay for half of the utilities. She would only pay one-fifth. She said she was my guest and I was being disrespectful by not keeping my apartment at the temperature she wanted. And it was even more disrespectful to ask her for money because I initially said she could stay there for free. She threw such a huge fit that I told her to forget it and bought her a fan for her room. My electric bill was $100 more than it was the previous year when I was living alone, so I figured she was secretly running the AC while I was at work. I went home in the middle of the day to find my apartment at 62 degrees when it was 100 degrees outside. I finally told her I wasn't expecting her to live there for so long and to start paying rent. I asked her for $300 a month for her own bedroom and a two-bedroom apartment that cost me $1,200 a month. More than fair. She was so angry that I would even think of asking for rent that stopped being my friend, blocked me on Facebook, and moved in with her new boyfriend. The fricked up part is that she made twice as much money as me and didn't even work. She got $1,700 a month from the government for going to school, plus $1,200 that her parents gave her a month. She could buy a new iPad, new iPhone, get hundreds of dollars in new clothes every month, and go out to bars every other night. 
but if I asked her for $300 in rent money, then I'm a fricked-up friend and disrespecting her. Too long didn't read, I let my friend stay in my spare bedroom when she unexpectedly got kicked out of her old place. I started asking her for rent after eight months, and she said I was a fricked-up friend. The good thing about dumb-butt friends like yours is that they often decide to go away forever like this. Let her ruin someone else's life. I, too, have had the friend that needed a place to crash for a few weeks that turned into months. It's really baffling just how entitled they get. My friend was crashing on our couch in the living room, staying up all night, and then complained when we made any noise during the day when he slept. Never letting a friend crash like that again without a signed list of rules. Story 42 a previous roommate immediately after moving in started putting food in the recycling bin, along with cigarettes and the diapers of a friend's baby. Side note, we're pretty sure the friend's baby is really the roommate's baby she gave up. After telling us she didn't drink, started going through 50 beers a week. Announced she was a nudist and will be naked unannounced, giving us no chance to plan bringing guests over. Ate our food and drank 50 plus dollars of my booze. She had a new guy over every night. We're pretty sure these men were paying her because she had no job, but was buying drugs, cigarettes, and some food. She would let these men use our bathroom products. I even caught her and her guest using my deodorant and she denied it, even though I saw it. She stole $400 in cash. She lost her key and started climbing in through the windows instead of just asking for a new key, and when we started locking the downstairs window, she stole a ladder to get into her second story window. And she filed a false report to the police claiming she was violated and mugged and claimed she had hundreds in cash in her purse to claim insurance money. She was also on H. She got kicked out after one month for not paying rental utilities. She also kept asking to borrow my and other roommates' clothes and shoes even though she weighed 100 pounds more than us. Also, the most frequent guy she had over who was one of her baby daddies, we found out later was and probably still is wanted by the police for theft. She got kicked out after a month? That's a lot to happen in a month. She sounds exciting. Story 43 I need a place to stay so a good buddy of mine lets me have an extra room he is not using. He is getting rent dirt cheap $300 for a three-bedroom within walking distance of downtown. About a year later, he just up and quits fairly high-paying job. He tells me a bit before this that rent went up because the landlord found out I was there. Fair enough. I am still only paying $300 for a decent apartment. I'm working nights at the time and confront him a few times about the loud music he plays when I'm trying to sleep. He corners me one night about this, saying I'm being a bad roommate. Shortly after quitting his job, he got caught for DUI. More on this later. He starts going to the bar more and more frequently till he is there from open to close every night. About six months of this, he finally gets his sentence and goes to jail. His mother and I agree that I will continue to pay my half of the rent and she would take care of the other half. However, two days later, I get to summons. Rent has not been paid for seven months. Turns out he has been taking the money both I and his mother had been giving him for rent and spending it nightly at the bar. Rent had never been increased, and I now have one week to find a new place to live and get out of this apartment. Story 44 I had a couple bad ones. The worst was a construction worker from Lithuania who was in England to work for a few months. We shared an apartment, eight people, including two others of high colleagues. And it was sort of messy, so much that he would often say how he missed his wife's care and tidiness. One evening I just finished eating and was smoking a cigarette, he came to the kitchen and started throwing the unwashed pans around, swearing in Lithuania. I understood what was going on and got a bit upset, so I just basically told him to chill the frick out, and that I would wash them as usual right after the cigarette. At this point he freaked out, flipped the coffee table and all the plates slash cups on it, with a kick and came at me in a fury with a loaded fist. I should mention that he was 5 foot 10 for about 250 pounds of muscle and quite under the influence of Martel. They down a bottle each night. At the last moment, he decided not to hit me, but I shat my pants. Not literally. And was a bit shaky for an hour or two afterwards. Had he not somehow restrained himself, he would have made dog food out of me. Honorable mention for my current roommate's boyfriend who makes the whole house stink like a junkyard whenever he takes a crap. That man's rotten inside. I had a male roommate, I am female, that I found on Craigslist. He seemed okay until his girlfriend dumped him. Then he got into some crazy crap. One night I was studying for a midterm with my parrot on my shoulder. 
I walk out of my room to get some water and saw that he is walking into the bedroom with a H. You could tell this lady was a H from a mile away. Very overweight, teeth missing, barely any clothing, strong, cheap perfume. Uh, okay, not cool, but I'll just keep going out my business. So I come out later for something and she is running from his bedroom. He is running after her naked but turns around to put something on when he sees me. Meanwhile, my parrot gets startled and freaks and flies to the highest thing around, her head. She freaks about that and falls to the floor, thrashing about. I'm screaming, hold still, so I can untangle my parrot's feet from her hair before she gets crushed. I get the bird out and go to put her somewhere safe in my room. My roommate at this point has returned and is physically assaulting the H in the hallway. I react by running out and screaming at him to stop. He acquiesced and returned to his bedroom. I locked the front door. He starts texting me that I need to put out now, blah, blah, blah. His creepiness scale heavily increased after that. Eventually, I had to just move out and get away from him. Too long didn't read, my roommate bought a H home and beat her. Honestly, I knew this story was going to be messed up the moment I saw that the first sentence ended with found on Craigslist. Might as well have found your roommate on... You know, I can't really think of a good example because the worst example I can think of is Craigslist. Story 46. My college roommate Mike and I slowly entered into a prank war with each other. He printed pictures of Goatsy and Tub Girl and left them under my sheets to find a bedtime. I retaliated by taking all his boxers, putting them in a bag, adding water, and freezing them. I wake up one night and realize I'm being duct taped to my bed. I retaliate by password locking his computer. The war dies down, but then a mutual friend of ours visits. Mike is taking a shower and we fill the trash can full of ice water and douse Mike in it. His scream reminded me of the little rat guy from Jabba's palace in Return of the Jedi, if that rat guy had died a painful death. And then Mike gets me back. I wake up for my 8 a.m. class and shower. I go to blow dry my hair and this billow of smoke hits me in the face. Holy crap, my hair dryer caught fire. It was early in the morning. At that point, I realized it's not smoke, but powder. Gold Bond. Mike had re-engineered the back of it to have a canister and he filled it with Gold Bond. It's in my mouth. It's in my eyes. I cough. I cry. He wakes up. He laughs his butt off. I run fully clothed to the shower and turn it on to wipe my eyes out. I swore revenge. About a year later, I stole all his Freezy Pops. Too long didn't read, roommate and I entered a prank war that ended with me crying. Yeah, crying over how delicious those Freezy Pops are. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.